and see is enough. This is again the black letter law, the law on the books. Yes. So how are we going to make it operational? That is going to, that is difficult again because Pakistan again is not a party to the Rome Statute. So what can you do? Jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court, the preconditions are that the state on whose territory the crime has allegedly been committed is part of the Rome Statute. If we ask this, not the case. The state whose nationality the perpetrator has is part of the, has ratified the Rome Statute. Well, it's the same, basically. So it doesn't help us. And the only option would be referral by the Security Council. Uh, the dependent falls on the majority of the Security uh, Council approving of such a, a decision. And there might always be one of those playing the rules and say, well, we veto this deci decision. So that would be a dead end street. Even if you have jurisdiction, it must be triggered. So that's the second step. That can be done by a state party, by a security council again, or by the prosecuting acting proprio motu, which means on their own account. They take, the prosecutor can take the initiative. So then you are already there. Then it takes years before you get a proper outcome, of course. A, 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 a rather simple case uh, against the guy who uh, was accused of conscripting child soldiers, Donald Lubanga, took some six or seven years for to complete. So that's not very encouraging, I would say. So, so much for the International Criminal Court. I can't make it nicer than it is. Uh, so is there still... Is there still a glimmer of hope? I would say yes, because the mere fact that you identify this as a crime against humanity or a war crime has some, some norm expressivist value. You can show the people that these are war crimes, are crimes against humanity, which are committed in Baluchistan. Moreover, as soon as this is recognized and acknowledged, you take the second step, and that implies, and that I, I already mentioned this, that it would be a possibility for states to establish and exercise univer uh, universal jurisdiction. So as soon as someone touches your territory, for instance here in Holland or in Sweden or in the UK, states are under an obligation at least to consider to establish and exercise jurisdiction. So I think that's a good thing at least that we can conclude at the end of this afternoon. Thank you. Um, before we move on to the panel discussion, I think we're just going to take like a 10 minute break. Um, there are snacks and um, coffee and tea in the back, so if you want to get it, then yeah, and then we'll start again in about 10 minutes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.